Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to take this microphone and we're going to completely tear it down and rebuild it into something awesome. This is an $18 Chinese mic called a newer uh, ME800. We're going to completely gut it and we're going to replace it with some components from JLI Audio, including a brand new capsule and a brand new circuit, uh, gain circuit inside of the microphone. We're going to do some before and after tone test comparisons, and I'm really confident that the mic is going to turn from something that's really, really underwhelming to something that is fantastic. All in combined cost is under $100. I think you can walk away with a mic that is really, really fantastic that's, that probably competes with something worth uh, well over that price range. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and stick around. Let's dive in. This is my receipt. I ordered these products from JLI Industries. Uh, no sponsorship, just that they think they sell a nice product at a nice price. You can see I bought four things. First is $67, I believe. First is the capsule right there. That's the most important piece. Then there's some mounting hardware. There's a black like mounting ring that screws onto the body, the chassis. And then you have this preamp uh, circuit that helps boost the signal up, getting your phantom power. This is the mic taking it apart. It just unscrews from the bottom. There's two screws holding the old circuit board onto the chassis. Then there's two more screws that hold the top, I guess, windscreen, or I guess not even exactly sure, the, the microphone grill, I suppose is what you would call it. That exposes the original capsule. You can see it's relatively small and fairly cheap looking. Now this is unsoldering the existing component board. Just take my soldering iron and heat it up and these tabs popped right off. Really we should invest in getting a third hand or at least getting one big enough to hold something like this, but maybe someday. Then the two controls up to the capsule. So you can see the overall circ circuitry is pretty basic. Now there's two screws holding the capsule mount to the chassis. We're gonna hold on to this just in case I ever wanna use it again in the future. So this is the chassis we're going to work with. We're going to keep these parts. I mixed up some two-part epoxy that's actually meant for golf clubs, uh, but any kind of glue or epoxy meant for bonding plastic and metal would work fine. And I use that to uh, mix it up and then I place it or I layer it on top of the cradle there. And then I just simply laid my capsule on top of that and let it dry overnight. While I was working on that, um, I took the bottom of the XLR connector, and there are four pins here. Two of them are stuck together on the black wire that are ground, and then the other two, one is your hot to bring your audio signal, and one is bringing your voltage, your 48 volt phantom power. And you want to add two little capacitors. These are actually 33 pico farads. Um, they run from the basically the yellow to the black, and then the red to the black. So they're providing some very high frequency RF. Uh, f filtering. And you can see I just, um, a little bit tricky getting the soldering in just right, but it worked just fine actually. Again, they go from the red to the black and then the yellow to the black. You can see kind of a close up here. The black wires are on the bottom left in this, and then the right side is the red, and then the top left, now that I'm rotating closest to you, is the yellow. Each of those has a 33 nanofarad or picofarad cap to ground. Now, um, this is the new component board. You can see yellow goes to UCC, red goes to signal, black goes to ground. Those are the signals from the XLR connector to the new component board. You can see how I wired it up right here. Then the yellow and green connections here, signal and ground, go up to the Uh, the uh, capsule. And 
just using my old screws to mount the new component board onto the chassis. Now this is the cradle where the glue is dried now and I have these little rubber grommets from the hardware mounting pack that kind of slot into these little um, cutouts and then you use the screws to mount into those rubber grommets onto the chassis and they thread right in and then the other two holes bring the yellow wire and the green wire. Now I only had three grommets so I just used the bare green one uh, which should be fine. And then I soldered those wires to the uh, capsule and then we are good to go. So now I'm remounting the uh, grill back on top again with those same two screws. Give me one last look over and then we pop the body cover back on. And then we screw in the base plate and then give it a nice secure tight twist and everything is all done. Ready to test. Hey it's Clay. This is a vocal test of the stock newer microphone. My uh, voice is about one two finger lengths away from the pop filter and that's about two filter lengths away from the microphone. So just the stock, newer microphone as it is. All right, hey, this is Clay. This is the NUA JLI modifications made to this newer microphone. This is a vocal test of the new microphone after it has been modified. Let's go ahead to the acoustic guitar. themselves like a crack in the wall starting small and growing time and we all seem to need the help of someone else to mend that shelf too many books read me your favorite found someone who understands the ticking and the western man's need to cry he came back the other day yeah you know some things in life may change and some things they stay the same Oh 